Hello and welcome to the GMBN Tech Show. What have we got coming up this week? Oh, isn't there a new common cell? There is indeed, and there's a new Ivis Mojo. Yeah, and a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't cram into the last three videos from Eurobike. There's loads of it coming up. Okay, into this week's show, and well, just come back from Eurobike, yeah. which was a um, bit of an overdose of, of bike stuff. <laughs> I don't know if I'm I, jealous or not, like really glad I didn't honestly, have to go through all of it. I've, I've said for many years, I equally love and loathe it. Yeah. Love all the cool doing. You learn to loathe how your feet feel afterwards and how tired you are and how wet your t-shirt gets and yeah, all the rest of it. But yeah, <laughs> but we, we made uh, what, three videos from from the show and we've got loads of stuff coming up in this show. Uh, there's going to be some video links down there. Hopefully, if uh, if Super Sick Toff is paying attention and puts the links in down there, if he's not, <laughs> give him some flack in the comments. Um, well, I guess this week, so just talking about some of the cool stuff that we saw yeah. at Eurobike. I mean, I've written some random notes on here. Uh, I'll go straight in with those trick stuff, 3D tire brake levers. Oh, my days. Did you notice like... they had a pink version as well? No. It was like pink anodized version. Ooh. And I was like, mm, that would be dreamy. Maybe it was like some Chris King pink stuff. Just yeah. to be honest, everything on their stand, they just had bikes decked out with just the best of the best. The bike mm. like Hover Shock and the Intent Fork on there. Just, just everything. And some and of I, the... I don't tell you about the costs either. <laughs> They're one of those brands. They're like, if you're asking, you yeah, it's like probably the, be here. when you go into Gucci in the airport. Like, <laughs> there's no, there's no price tags. Uh, <laughs> no point. Um, speaking of brake levers, on the Manitou and the Hay stand, uh, I got to see my bike, which was very cool, um, and Neil or Blake's bike, which wasn't as nice as my bike, uh, which I've said before. But they had two cool brake levers. So one was on this kid's bike. And it fits on the standard Dominion brakes, but it's basically just a much shorter lever designed to be closer to the bar. And the actual sort of depth of the lever blade is designed for little fingers to be able to wrap around. Do you know what? Like I cars. want them to bring that out as an adult version well, so well, that could... I could have just like a mini lever. Do you remember well, well, you used have. to have that? They basically have. So really? They, yeah, they got this one as well. Um, and it's, I think, Correct me if I'm wrong, Hayes, but I think some downhill races or some races on their team, but we want a much shorter lever to use. So they made the exact same shape as a kid's one, but it's just a bit deeper for your fingers. Nice. So that's that's what you want. Would want. want. Yeah, and hey, yeah, loads of cool stuff. That Dorado was on there, that new Matuk fork, loads of cool stuff. And that Gamux downhill bike with, um, that's a good point actually, it had that um, pinion, pinion gearbox on there that's mm. got the, um, God, my brain's fried. Auto shift, was Yeah, it? what did well, they call it, though? Shift, smart it? shift. That's it. So the, the one on there didn't have the smart shift engaged. It had, like, the lever, which, to be fair, that in itself is great because previously they've had the twist grip, not twist mm. shift, which riding aggressive terrain can be difficult to do. And the buttons felt great in a really nice position. And apparently that system is calibrated to each user, like, like the RPM they want to spin at and where they want mm. the gears to change and stuff. So I'm fascinated to try that at some point, but obviously couldn't because that was... Yeah, I really feel like that Gamex downhill team is some to, something to watch because literally every time I see them, they have something completely something different new. on their bike. Yeah. Literally every time. Yeah, 100% I agree with you. I think they're excited to watch it any, any mm. round just for the tech they're developing and stuff. Uh, the Danger Home Bikes, of course, and more than a few of you commented on his shorts. It's like, come on, he's been doing the shorts thing for a long time. He's got to maintain his appearances, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got a brand and it's definitely recognisable, I think. Yeah. And uh, he's brought out a flat bar gravel bike. So, yeah. I mean, if denim shorts doesn't scream gravel to you, I don't know what does. Yeah, so. 100%. I mean, it's, it's like, for those of you that haven't heard him talk, when you see him, he looks like he should be like, Rawr. Yeah. He's like, hello, how are you? Like, <laughs> he's just the nicest. He's just such a great guy, fascinating the stuff he does. Uh, and interestingly, I was talking to him about that access derailleur that he built, mm. an 11 speed derailleur built from part of a SRAM red road mech, a ceramic speed cage, and a mm. bit of some other pieces. And a lot of the access engineers are like, they're really into it behind the scenes. They're like, oh, we can't say we love it, but. Love we it. love it. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Like, can I have some parts to push you? And they're like, no, but we do like what you're doing. And I yeah. think that's really cool. That yeah. I can understand why they wouldn't give them stuff to promote that. But very cool. I mean, the, the amount of people that were going to the Scott stand to see him and his bikes. Yeah. Like, it, you know, no one was looking at the rest of the Scott stand. Yeah, it's really it. I mean, Nikolai had a huge stand this year with so many bikes. But the, uh, in fact, the, the bright yellow bruiser, it was all about that for me with the 26 inch <laughs> rear wheel. Like when we, when we talked about it on the press release a few weeks back, or yeah. a few shows back, yeah, yeah. I was a bit like, yeah, that's kind of cool. When you see it, you're like, oh my God, this is so New World Disorder, <laughs> like early 2000s, it, but modern. It tweaked a little bit of retro inside oh, yeah. of you, didn't you? Yeah, didn't but it, it looks yeah. like if you're, if you're one of those riders, you'll get it. It's just 
mega, and then the white Marzocchi stuff as well. Yeah, you did go a bit gooey over all of that. And yeah, I was but, looking at it, and I, I was listening like it, to though. you, and I was like, for me, it was um, Magura forks were yeah, white. My yeah. first pair of proper enduro forks, enduro, enduro didn't really exist back then, but it was my hardcore hardtail, and it had a pair of Magura durins on in white uh, with black stanchions, and I thought they looked the business. And Boss as well, I had some white Boss forks on my white, whitey Capra. I mean, people got carried away with white. There was yeah. white rims, white bars, white stems, white everything, I kind of feel like it might make a bit of a I resurgence. I think it is. There's something coming up in the news that might show you there's some definitely Oof. white on white is coming back. Well, I don't um, know if it's good or not. We're going we're gonna to pick up the rest of the Eurobike show um, after this. We're going to jump into news, check out some comments for you lot, and then we'll leave you uh, with the rest of the stuff we shot at Eurobike. Okay, so a couple of new things to talk about that we didn't see at Eurobike, and the first one of which is the new Ibis. Uh, this is it on screen uh, in various different colours, including this, uh, what do they call it, wizard sleeve purple? <laughs> they like, did call it, that wizard sleeve was the green. Oh, that's the green, was it? And then yeah. there was like a palmer violet lavender. Palmer violet, well, that's right? the one, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's exactly that. So it's the HD6, uh, it's the latest version of it. So now it's a mixed wheel size. Uh, standard. So 27.5 on the rear, 29 on the front, 165mm travel out back, 180 up on the front. So it's a proper bruiser of a bike. Bit slacker than previous, it's 64 degrees and it's got size specific seat angles on there. So something quite cool that they posted in this sort of press pack was that if you're going to have the same size seat angle across all the bikes that they offered, between Anna's size and my size, my seat would be 45 mil further backwards if it maintained mm. that. So it just illustrates how important that geometry is. So on the, the smaller size, they're about 76 degrees, and on the bigger sizes, it's a shade under 78 degrees. So it does make a significant difference, but to do that, they've had to have an additional size, which is good because the steps between them aren't quite so sort of accentuated now. So uh, like I said, 64 degrees between all of them. And then, yeah, 76 to 77 and a half on the, on the biggest, five sizes, so small, medium, large, extra large, and double XL. The reach between those is 430 up to 541. So you're up there with Geometron and the, the proper big boys, Pole and stuff. Uh, seat tube length varies between 368 and 470, so although there is a difference, it's not significant between all those, uh, and they accept full length posts. Lifetime warranty, frame retails for 3,899 US dollars, and builds from 6,099 up to 11,199. Mm. So, a feral range. Oh, it, it looks, looks sick. good, it looks, yeah. you know, it looks really nice. Uh, do you think, like, as a retro nerd, are you sort of ashamed that the mojo is no longer that infinity? Eight shape anymore? No. So I remember really lusting after that as a big thing. Do you know what? So I, I, I had one and sold it actually to a, to a friend that works within the company. He still rides it to work over his brand new other bike. He just he loves it and it yeah. it does look old, but it doesn't look that bad. No, it's it doesn't like, look it do, that bad. It does stand up, but I do think the new one does look better. Didn't date, it's more yeah. modernised, yeah. Uh, what well, also new is the Common Sound Meta. This is the version 5 of the Meta, and unlike the Mojo, which is going mullet only, these guys are going 29er only. You've got 150 in the rear, 160 at the front. Check this out on screen, because I think it looks lush. I think it looks like a long travel version of the Tempo that we recently saw. Obviously, uh, aluminium frame, as it's Common Sound, um, and it's being built to be fast, but particularly a playful enduro bike. Um, so it's got a new flip switch in it, which means that the bottom bracket height uh, will be dropped or raised by 5.8 mil, and the head angle can be um, dropped or put forward by uh, 0.4 of a degree. The chain stays are proportional to either size small, medium, um, which would be 435 mils. Uh, the larges or extra larges get the 440. So uh, frame sets will be 2,100 euros. $2,200 in the USA um, and then the you've got a signature model in white with Fox which looks really lush um, and then that Olin's model in the metallic green is just looking so oh, good yeah, um, or if you're into rock shocks then you get the midnight blue and then going on that sort of white on white look that we think is coming back as a trend their base model is white on white with a Fox white Fox um, starting at 4,100 euros or $4,000 in the USA. USA. So yeah, 
I think it was sick. I'm a big fan of actually Come Myself of Late. It is, mm. I'm, and it surprised me that this came out looking like this because obviously we've seen prototypes of the Enduro team yeah. riding with the, um, it's like a six bar linkage, was it? Yeah. Um, but basically I wonder if they're going to come out with a racing Enduro bike and this is just a long travel trail Enduro bike. Kind I don't know. It feels maybe. like that. It feels like they chop and change quite a lot. Yeah. You know, no bad thing. Um, but before we go into Eurobike stuff, I just wanted to throw a picture of their new BMX project on the screen as well because all my days I don't even like BMX but I want to start racing just so I could have one of these bikes. It looks <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's not going to be in production anytime soon. It's just been built for the uh, BMX World Cups and the pros that are racing for Comensal and you've got that beautiful kind of oh, forged yeah. head tube, forged bottom bracket. It almost looks lugged. Mm. Um, and it just looks lush, so I just thought I'd put that up there. Tidy, and quite surprising <laughs> for you to mention that. Yeah, um, me too. I hey, Doddy, yeah. do you fancy popping back to Eurobike and just sweeping up what we missed? Okay, yeah, I'll just yeah. jump on a plane, shall I? Cool, cool. Right. see you later. Okay, so this is actually on day three of Eurobike. We've already done all the content we could possibly do, but we've got so much stuff left over that we're going to put a little compilation together right now. Enjoy. We've seen Ride Concept shoes over the last few years just emerging and becoming, frankly, in a massive footwear manufacturer. Uh, but a particular shoe that appeals to me is the Talak. So I like my clip-in style shoes or clipless shoes. These have obviously got the nice recess on them. But for quite a long time, I think it's safe to say that the flat pedal community haven't had proper tech shoes. They tend to be a bit more like skate shoes, something like that. Now that's really nice. They look cool, they look good at the pub, they look casual, but they're missing some of those tech features. It's nice to see this shoe in a flat pedal version. So you've got a BOA system on the top, you've got a heavy duty toe box, you've got a rubberized toe cap, you've got a fit adjustment strap on there, you've got a seriously tough heel box in there. I mean, they look brilliant. They look, they're gonna be good on and off the bike, but having something that's properly technical for riding in for flat pedals, I think it's a really good thing. It's definitely a sign of the times that manufacturers like this are choosing to give equal weight to flat pedals and clips. It's important. So although not designed for mountain biking, it's for urban protection. This is essentially the bladder protection system that goes on the inside of this Evoc bag. This one is a pre-inflated one to show you what would happen in the event of an accident. At the front on the sternum strap, which I'll show you in a sec, you've got a little sensor on there that once you've adjusted the sternum strap, it shows you little green lights to show it's armed, essentially. And within 0.2 of a second, it can inflate, which is faster than you could go through the air, let alone hit the floor or an object. And it's calculating thousands of times a second on any movement that's unnatural what you do on a bike. This is the unit that goes on the inside. It's chargeable by USB on here. And you have a cartridge system that clicks into here to inflate it. This is a cartridge system. They're replaceable afterwards, of course. So in the event of an accident, you will need to replace that cartridge system on the inside, but it plugs into place. And that's essentially how it works. It's super cool to see something like this. It's so positive in urban safety, especially when cycling to work, cycling around town in the urban environment, frankly, is really dangerous. A lot of people are intimidated by that. Love to know what you think of this system. Uh, this is obviously reusable after an impact. It starts deflating after you've hit the floor or whatever it is you're unlucky enough to hit. You can repack it, put the new cartridge in, good to go again. Just walked past yet another Nino bike. There's me thinking it was the most special thing in the world, a Nino special. Turns out his bikes are everywhere. Anyway, on the Scott stand, bit of a retro corner special here. So this is an old endorphin. Um, I had to check that because I'd actually forgotten that these even existed. Note the fact it doesn't have a chain stand there. So it's kind of like an elevated chain stay bike. Protection tape on here, basically to stop it from the chain slap, chipping the paint away. 26 inch wheels. In fact, the rims and the hubs on these are pretty special. So X517 rims from Mavic. They've got tune hubs front and rear, so custom laced up wheels. Michelin Wild Grippers, although I used to know those as Wild Slippers because although they were kind of cool looking at the time, they weren't particularly brilliant. Thompson Seat Post, an old classic on there. Grip Shift SRT 800 X-rays on there. They were really cool. If you were a Tomac fan, you used to have like the uh, yellow stickers on the top, but they would go brown after a while on the insides because they had a clear casing. Avid speed dial levers on there as well. So that's before basically SRAM invested into Avid because uh, you know SRAM brakes used to be Avid way back in the day. Uh, Avid calipers as well. I can't remember what they were called, but they're like V-brakes. Uh, replaceable shoes on the pads and a Scott Unicrown fork on there. So. These old forks, very different design to most modern day suspension forks that you would associate them having like a crown and then you have the legs going into the crown. 
This is actually quite a smart way of building a fork because that's how forks used to be made on the upper anyway. So nothing to flex, nothing to be worried with. They look a bit odd, but kind of a cool approach. Man, come a long way. If you think about what Nino's bike looks like, I just walked past compared to that. I'd much rather ride Nino's bike, obviously, than that, but uh, kind of nice to know where we came from. I didn't even notice that there's a brand new endorphin equivalent right here. Bit of a project bike using a very similar elevated chain stay look, uh, I guess just for fashion in this case, where it was for function, a little bit of flex on the early one. But, oh man, so I guess you could say it's a retro mod. I think it's cool. V Tires is another company making tires, got their own factory to make everything they need with tires. And they're actually starting to make some excellent tires now. We saw some of the early tires a few years back, the early versions of Snap, and they were already performing great. Now they're starting to have real breadth of range in their tires. This one is the latest Mark II version. It's got 2.5 casing on there, 29 and 27 and a half. And it's got a very soft compound. As you can see, it's got siping on there, leading ramps, all the stuff you really need to roll as fast as possible, but make sure it cuts in and gets that edge. Cracking shoulder on those as well. Check them out. Oh, I've had my eye on a parts washer for a long time. A little bit big for my workshop, but one day, one day I will have one of these. Oh, and I can get things properly clean. Vars, great tool company, been around for a long time. Check some of this stuff out. So I'm absolutely not knocking any company that produces this stuff, but something very cool to say is, obviously you've got loads of different mech hangers. And I think it's something like 101 different combinations available on the market. VAR obviously make loads of them, but thanks to what SRAM have offered the world with the UDH, the Universal Derailleur Hanger System, it simplifies things. So it's a better approach for everyone, but it was also a very clever card played by SRAM because it enabled them to release what we've now seen with their direct mount mech system on there. So very cool to SRAM. And thankfully, in the long term, goodbye to having far too many of these. Nothing wrong with them, but there's no need to have all these different designs. Now, any of you that have watched GMBN Tech before will know that, well, at least I'm obsessed with tools. Anna, a little less so, but she still does love a good toolkit. But what I'm really starting to appreciate is how neat you can get systems by companies like VAR. I mean, look at this. So you've got all your Torx wrenches in the top here and you don't even need to get shadow foam or Kaizen foam. It's got the system built in here. This, to me, is just immensely pleasing, and it's something that I really need to do. I just have never got around to doing it. But I'll tell you what, I mean, this is all super neat, but whoever did that just, they should be fired, really, shouldn't they? <laughs> I've just seen my destiny right here, a portable parts washer. <laughs> I can finally get a parts washer that fits in my workshop. I'm 100% gonna get one of these. That is mega. Portable parts washer. Genius, genius. So good. Uh, VAR tools, check them out. If you're in the market for a workstand, one of the things you need to factor in is where you use it. Now, I've got a Park Tool Pro workstand at home with the massive cast iron floor plate. I need that because I work on a lot of bikes all the time, but I don't have a mobile solution. If I was gonna get one, I'd probably be looking for something like this by Feedback Sports. Now these red anodized aluminium stands have been around for decades. They're really, really old. And on the World Cup scene, you always see traveling mechanics using these because they're so light and yet they're so good to use. Quick release features that you can, you can slam and open. You've got a nice dial on them. They're just really intuitive to use. Obviously you can get them with different bolts on accessories and even have tool wraps as part of the stands. Great brand to check out, Feedback Sports. Chances are that your mountain bike will have a no-name stem on there and potentially a handlebar as well. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because the focus of the bike isn't the bars and stem. However, if you want your bike to stand out from the others, a little bit more special than what you're going to see on the market, then check out what Industry 9 are doing. So this is a beautiful stem, lovely interface at the front, even these lovely machine spacers, the headset, and it's just, just makes your bike that bit nicer than your mates, more importantly. So if you want to make your bike that bit nicer, it's these sort of upgrades that really do set your bike apart. And of course, if you want to go a step further than that, and of course you've got Industry 9 wheels, uh, you've got a whole hog that goes to that. All right, fair dues. It is an e-bike, but the all Bay Wild, this thing is, in my eyes, something a bit more special. I always look for the lines on a bike, and this just has everything going on. But what's really accentuated is the paint job on this. So this is using their Mayo custom program. So if you're in the market for a new bike and you fancy a custom paint job, brands like Old Bayer have got custom paint shops in-house. 
and you can choose a bike in the colors and the design you want. You can even have some custom graphics with your name or a motto, whatever you want on the bike. Now check out the video that Neil made when he went to visit them. There's gonna be a link somewhere floating around underneath this video in the descriptions. You're gonna be able to check that out because you can get custom painted bikes off the peg these days. Insane, and it's a beautiful finish on that paint as well. Man, come a long way from when EMBN launched back in the day. In fact, can we flash in a little shot of Jonesy's first e-bike here? And now look at where we are with stuff like this. Man, it's, it's unreal, isn't it? The technology you see at this show. Right, we should probably find a regular powered bike, shouldn't we now? Now here's a question I keep asking myself and I keep asking Jonesy over on EMBN, ABS. Are we going to see it mass market or not? When I went to see Magura, I was convinced because just blown away by what the technology offers. And you are starting to see it filter through on some production e-bikes now. So this one's KTM. Uh, of course, it's an e-bike, so you can find out more about that on EMBN. But ABS brakes, in case you are wondering, basically, is not quite what you think. What this enables is you to fully load the front end of the bike and you simply don't lose traction. So think about that situation out on the trail where you're going down a really loose descent, maybe with small, you know, sort of like marble sized rocks and stuff, and your wheel will lock up. And what happens, the wheel locks as it rolls on those rocks. When you have the ABS, it fractionally lets the wheel rotate until you get over that, and then it will start locking up and slowing you down again. And this will happen in fractions of a second, way faster than you can ever feather the brakes. It's an incredible system, and I really would love to see more development on this, but not seeing that much at the moment. Now, you could be forgiven for forgetting about brands like Hutchinson, but they've been making tires a long time, and actually, they were one of the original brands that teamed up with Michelin and Mavic to develop the UST tubeless system. They've been in it from the beginning. The Griffiths is an excellent tire. It's a really underrated tire. You just don't see enough out there. It's got a Racing Labs compound. It's ultra soft. They've got a really good shoulder on them. And they've also, if it's your fancy, they've got this cool kind of brown sidewall on them. I actually used a set of these on that Manitou bike build bike that I hear. My bike is here actually somewhere. So we're gonna go and catch up with that a bit later. But uh, just wanna put this one out there. 2.5 casing, e-bike compatible, enduro tire. Happy days. It's also good to note that there's loads of other great tires at the moment and a brand new one launched today. Uh, firstly, the Kraken. This is kind of like, um, even though you use it on the front, I'd say this is a rear tire. Looking at that paddle construction, the hard edge on there, it looks almost a bit like a semi-slick. Super low stack height on there, and you've got almost a central tread. That's gonna be super fast. They uh, say so that one's a 2.4, available in uh, the tan wall and in also in the black wall. The, the Python and the Toro are tires we've seen for years. They're kind of not really changed. No bad thing, they're there. But this is the latest tire they've just launched today, the Worm, uh, or the Worm. They say that you can use this front or rear, but I would say this would be a great front tire in combination with the Kraken. They're calling this a down country tire, and they say this is a 66 TPI casing instead of a 120, which is a bit more common for Trail and XC. Of course, Vittoria use a 66 TPI casing on their down country tire as well for the same reasons. It means you get slightly thicker fibers uh, closer together, basically, rather than the 120 that's just super fine. They're a bit tougher, a bit thicker, more support at lower pressures, which you kind of want on a sort of 100 to 120 mil travel bike. Uh, aggressive profile, fairly soft compound. That's all you need to know, but loads of stuff in the range, but a hot tip, I think, really still is that Griffiths. Trick stuff, Stan. Some of this stuff gets me properly hot and bothered. I mean, this is a Kingdom titanium frame here, in 10 fork on the front there. Trick stuff rotors, calipers all over the bike. Active 5 cranks on there as well. Uh, another set of those called brake levers up on the top. Oh my God. Just here at the Muckle stand, checking out some of the new products. I mean, because as always, they're always innovating, making new stuff. Now you might, well, you may not have seen the air tag holders that go on the inside of the tire to fit out Apple air tags to should your wheel or your bike get stolen so you can track it down. These are cool, these haven't changed, but what has changed is the air tag holders that go under your bottle cage. Now these ones are just a little bit tough the way they're made, they actually help improve the signal. And actually we hear that one of the product designers of these tags actually had his bike nicked to one of these on and did manage to get it back. He tracked it and it was on its way up to, I think like Liverpool or somewhere like that, managed to ring the nearby police and got the bike back. It's Really good thing, and if you're concerned about your property, using an AirTag system, if you're in the Apple sort of world, is a really good thing to use. It's there, use it. Uh, they've also got a cool sort of CNC machined mini pump. Let's go have a look at that, shall we? 
Uh, another new product from Muckoff is this tiny and very cool little mini pump. On the top here, it fits Presto and Schrader. You've got a nice flexible attachment, which if you're using a mini pump that doesn't have one of those, you'll know that sometimes it'll be easy to damage your valve core and actually let air out. So that's nice, nice simple action. Definitely it's a get you home style pump, but super small. No reason to not have one on a bike when they're that size. Comes with a nice little toggle system to keep that in place. Like it, that's nice. More great stuff from the guys at Nikolai. So this one is the G18 Hammer. Um, if I was tough, I would say this is the sickest thing of the week for sure. Um, but I'm not, so I won't say that. But you've got to look at this thing and think, man, who is this designed for? This is for like the Rampage riders. This is for the Fest Series riders. This is for that generation rider. Just wants to throw a bike around. It doesn't care what the bike is going to be doing underneath them. You've got a mullet setup, but with a 26 on the back, just when you thought 26 was dead. 27 half on the front. You can adjust the reach. You can put angled cups in there. Got a coil shock on there. This thing is just bomb proof. I mean, check the build on it. This one's even single speed. I don't know who it's for, but I love it. One of the coolest things you see at the bigger trade shows like Eurobike is kids' bikes. And we've got to look at the kids' bikes because the future stars of tomorrow are going to get there. And with Jackson Goldston right at the top now in the elite class, obviously it's his first year in elite, he's one of the products of running these little balance bikes. He was the first kid that, as far as I'm concerned, that I ever saw riding a balance bike, doing tricks at Whistler, jumping off the steps and the picnic benches down at the bottom there on a homemade version of one of these. And now, of course, every major brand has something like this to offer, but there's few brands that have a kid's range like Bulls. They've got every wheel size. How cool is that? And an extra cool little thing about this little Bulls uh, Toki runner is the tires on here. So then, although they're not Tioga, they're the exact same print as the classic BMX tire, the Tioga Comp 3 and the Town Bulls. That's got to be the coolest tire you can get on a little kid strider style bike. Awesome stuff. Oh, oh, that was quick. I thought I was done with all that stuff. Yeah. Nah, no, nah, there's always more at Eurobike. Anyway, that's all we've got time for, so we better say goodbye. But if you're uh, in the mood for more tech and you haven't already seen the Eurobike videos, go back and watch them. There's yeah. like three of them, isn't there? Yeah, do that. Hours of entertainment and EMBN stuff if you know you're into that sort of electric. That, that is if uh, Super Sick Toff has done the links down there. Yeah, yeah, Super Sick Toff. <laughs> Toff, Toff. Okay. Thanks. Happy the same. Bye.